All right, well, welcome everyone to today's discussion and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Caitlin Guthrow, a member of your North Texas Giving Day team, and I'm so glad you all could join us. So today's forum, we are going to be highlighting success stories from North Texas Giving Tuesday Now. Many of you have participated in this recent emergency fundraising campaign that we held on May 5th in partnership with United Way of Metropolitan Dallas and the Dallas Cowboys. And this campaign was really to inspire and fuel financial support for North Texas nonprofits who were both responding to and affected by COVID-19. And as we all know, every single nonprofit has been impacted in one or more ways in this global pandemic. So we hear from our nonprofit colleagues every year that one of the most valuable tools that they can have and access as they are preparing for the North Texas Giving Day season is hearing insights and lessons learned directly from nonprofits. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing to get today. I am so thrilled to be joined by three leaders in the nonprofit community, including Mark Porter, who's the executive director of Harmony Community Development Corporation. We have Trudy Hale, Development Director of Chamberlain Ballet, and Kevin Pernoto, Executive Director of Mission Oak Cliff. And collectively, these three organizations, they inspired more than 300 donations on May 5th and raised collectively over $42,000. I was incredibly inspired by what I saw happen with these three organizations on May 5th and how they really rallied uh, their community and I wanted to bring them together and learn a little bit more from them and share that with you all. So first, let me just say, Mark, Trudy, Kevin, I know that there are a million things going on right now. You are all three being pulled in so many different directions. And I cannot thank you enough for spending just a little bit of time with us. Uh, typically our trainings are take 15 format. We're, be, we're gonna go a little bit deeper and take a little bit more than 15 minutes today um, so I do appreciate your time very much. So before we dive in into some of the, the meat and the mechanics of your campaigns, I first just want to start and have each of you share uh, with everyone how exactly has COVID-19 impacted your organization. And um, Mark, if you wouldn't uh, mind just kicking us off, I would greatly appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Caitlin. And thanks again for um, inviting us to be a part of this great conversation and this training. So we're delighted to be here and, and to uh, just kind of tell our story and what is happening with us during this time and how did we um, pivot during the pandemic. And that's what most nonprofits are doing during the season is how are we pivoting during this pandemic. And so for Harmony, um, we had to make a very quick decision. Actually, I was in Israel with a group of people along with a few of my team members and uh, things escalated with COVID-19. And, and while we were there, we made the decision, should we stay open or close? And we did a quick conference call with our team very quickly, made a decision to say, you know what, we are gifted and called and we have the systems in place to continue and to help families that are in need that are being impacted by COVID-19. So we made the decision that we're going to stay open. We're not going to shut down when most organizations and nonprofits and counseling centers were closing um, at the beginning of COVID-19. But we made the decision that we wanted to be there for our families and our communities and to continue to help serve them. So it was a very um, challenging season for us uh, at the beginning and we're continuing to uh, adjust. And that's what we are doing each and every day um, and coming up with ways of how can we best serve our families. And so like our food pantry, it's a client choice food pantry and we quickly shifted and pivoted to a drive-through food pantry model. Our counseling center uh, was used to having clients actually come into the counseling center and they very quickly 
uh, shifted over to teletherapy. And so that's what we've been doing during the season is um, just adjusting and, and finding ways of how can we continue to serve and reach people in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trudy, share a little bit about Chamberlain Ballet during this time. Well, Chamberlain Ballet was founded as a nonprofit in 1984. So right about the time COVID hit, we were having our huge, wonderful 35th anniversary celebration. <laughs> we um, are a performing arts company. It's Chamberlain Ballet says it all. What we are is a group of um, pre-professional dancers. These are all students that dance with us. They audition and become members of our company. We put on performances for the North Texas community. Um, we train, we expose them to artists from all over the country and uh, we bring in guest artists to be part of our productions. We bring in guest artists to do trainings. We also have a very healthy outreach program. We have both an after school uh, dance program for at-risk at children. We also have um, a dance program for special needs children and young adults. So we're very active in the community. We were getting ready to celebrate like we've never celebrated before and then everything shut down and we perform. That's what we do. Um, we had to immediately cancel the rest of our season. Um, every year we have recitals for our outreach programs for these wonderful children that we serve because dance is meant to be performed. Those had to be canceled for the first time ever. Um, so we really just had a critical mass shutdown. And to, to Mark's point, it's all about how do you pivot? How do you pivot when you can't do what you do every day? And imagine your world. And so it has been an entire um, spring and summer of how do we keep our company healthy? How do we continue to serve? We took classes online. We learned a lot there. We looked at our fall programming. I mean, it's just been, how do you get really, really creative when you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Creativity, pivoting. We, we really uh, truly know the word of adaptability and flexibility mm -hmm. when we're uh, faced with these kinds of times. So. Right. Thank you, Trudy, for giving us a little insight. And Kevin, tell us a little bit about what's been going on at Mission Oak Cliff. Yeah, so at Mission Oak Cliff, it's just been a time of increase for us. Um, increase in the number of people that we're serving. We've seen a 50% increase consistently. Um, we are serving over 40 new families and registering them into our program. Um, the number of people who are experiencing homelessness coming to us for services have increased. Now we're serving about 60 to 70 individuals every day. Um, and so we've just been having to purchase more food. We've been having to also um, opening up for more transformative services. So instead of just families being able to come in once a month, we've increased that to twice a month for our families just so that they have um, they don't have to worry about food on the table and don't have to worry about hunger. Um, and we've had to cut back on our volunteers so that volunteers can socially distance and we can keep proper safety measures at Mission Oak Cliff. Um, so we've been stretched. We are only a staff of four at Mission Oak Cliff, serving over 2,000 individuals every single month. Um, so it's it's been a lot, um, but we're really excited, um, especially about our new hire who's coming on in over a week, um, who will really help in areas of development and helping with um, really strengthening our volunteer programming at Mission Oak Cliff. Well, the small and mighty team will become then one of five. So congratulations. <laughs> well, I think your varied experiences really show the extremes and um, just on this spectrum of how COVID-19 has impacted nonprofits, you know, one of the things, you know, that you all did uh, on May 5th is you all showed the community uh, the importance you have and, and the role you play. And I'm just so curious to just start, talk a little bit about what was your overall approach uh, to that message to make your organization stand out? And I'll, I'll open it up to anyone who wants to, to jump in. 
I'll go first. Um, so Chamberlain has been involved with North Texas Giving Day for a very long time, since the beginning, and we've really enjoyed this association. Um, we had no idea what the May 5th drive was going to do. We had no way of saying what we thought um, it would do for us in terms of donations, how many people would participate. So the very, very first thing was to go to our North Texas Giving Day site, take a look at what was written there and say, okay, we've got to make the messaging, it's got to change because we were literally faced with something we'd never seen before. Um, so we worked very hard to detail that message down to what was going on with us now. Um, then to work through our avenues, the inexpensive free avenues, very, very quickly um, to get our message out there and to say, please, please support us. So it was, this is what's happening with us. This is what we're looking at right now. And this is how you can help us. And we were just very fortunate that um, our message was seen, our message was heard. We tried not to wear out our organization's um, patrons and supporters with too many messages, but we did get a lot of interest and we did get a lot of support and we were just extremely thankful to Communities Foundation of Texas, the Cowboys, everyone who, who made this event happen. So thank you. Welcome. I'm so glad it was helpful. Yeah, so I mean, and as Trudy said, really trying to make her message relevant. What were some of your other experiences? I know for us at Harmony and uh, we are very thankful for uh, Communities Foundation of Texas and North Texas Giving Day. We have been a part of it for at least five years now. And uh, it's been great for us to be a part of this special initiative uh, to focus on what's happening now in our community. And we just kept it simple and told the people that we're open and we're serving a community. And that was our consistent message that we sent out through all of our communication channels and the message that we had to, uh, to the North Texas Given Day for those who were looking at our site, that we're here serving the community and we're open. We did not close down and the need is there and the need is growing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. telling the stories about how the people are being impacted in our community. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to ask is, you know, through this, what did you find was most helpful? Was it the statistics? Was it the, the storytelling? Was it, you know, those, those key phrases and taglines? And Trudy, I know you came up with some really creative um, because you're, you couldn't serve. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, um, and Kevin, I'll turn it to you. What, what was most uh, effective? Sharing the statistics, sharing the stories, a combination? I think for us, it was both and. It was really important for me to both express the stories as well as the statistics of what was happening at Mission Oak Cliff and through Mission Oak Cliff um, to share the work that we were doing then in that moment and sharing how transformative our services were um, to the people coming in. Um, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear what we're doing. Um, during this time. Um, they want to know that we are open, like Mark said, and they want to know um, why, why Mission Oak Cliff? Why are people coming to Mission Oak Cliff and what are they receiving there? So it was really important for us to share, you know, the statistics of the 50% increase, um, the amount of groceries we were giving away to each household every time they were coming to visit, as well as sharing um, those, those stories personal stories of how people are being personally impacted, what they're going through um, right now in this season. Because um, so many people don't know um, what people are experiencing, um, especially if they're living in their bubble, they don't know um, what people are going through, how hard neighborhoods are being hit by COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, when I think about sort of the, the messaging, right, there's the meat of the message, but then there's also the, the mechanics of how you know, you push this out. And um, what was your, what was your focus? What were your priority platforms on May 5th? Where did you all focus on social media? Did you, you know, really push this out through 
uh, email because um, the, the level of donors that came to all three of your campaigns uh, was, you know, there were either a lot of new donors or a lot of loyal donors from the 2019 campaign. I mean, looking at your stats. So I'm, I'm curious what avenues you focused on. It was a combination of all of our existing platforms that were, we were using, and we had a lot of them already in place. So it was very easy for us to pivot to those and, and leverage those platforms to get our message out uh, to our donors and to our community and supporters, stakeholders that support Harmony. So we used social media, we use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, we have a newsletter that we use to get the word out, uh, just to share the message. So it was a variety of uh, platforms that we use to try to get the word out to let people know about uh, what Harmony is doing uh, for our community. Mm -hmm. What I thought was really interesting for our social media was that people were sharing um, our posts. So we even had corporations and businesses sharing about North Texas Giving Day and asking their patrons to support Mission Oak Cliff um, for COVID-19 relief. Um, so fitness studios and um, businesses and Bishop Arts were sharing um, our posts through social media, which I thought was just fantastic. Yes, and then you're immediately following up with them after May 5th and saying, hey, we'd love to have you as volunteers. And <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And you all, both of your organizations are providing critical services that are needed right now. Congratulations and thank you because we do have so many in our communities that are suffering and you are answering a huge need. Huge need. Um, thank you. Um, I'm glad you all were successful. We, because we're such a um, long standing organization, we have a very large uh, patron base that we manage. So our primary messaging was through our email database to, again, we had been obviously ramping up advertising, talking up our 35th anniversary weekend, and then we had to turn around and say, yeah, that's not happening, but this is what we're doing. This is how you can help us. So we already had our patron base tuned into, they're getting ready to do this big 35th anniversary celebration. And it was, yeah, we're not doing that because there's this pandemic thing. So could you please support us with North Texas Giving Day? And we had the majority of our donations come through North Texas Giving Day, but just that increased awareness. We also had donors that just gave directly to us. Um, obviously the majority went through North Texas Giving Day and it was, predominantly our patron base, not um, a, a ton of new donors to the organization. We did have new donors to North Texas Giving Day mm -hmm. are, are within our patron base. So that was, I would say our primary message was to our base to say, here's how we are. Now we also did overlay that with social media. We typically do more of a social media push for the typical September drive. So we will revert back to that a little bit more um, in this upcoming program. Okay. Well, one thing I, um, that's really helpful. One thing I'm, I'm curious about is, you know, one of the things that we struggle with as nonprofits is just how do we balance communicating the need, <laughs> the challenge, the statistics, but with also with positive messages, messages of hope, and of course, messages of impact. Um, you know, we're in a tough news cycle right now. I mean, there's the majority of the news that's coming out is, is not, um, it's not positive. And so I'm curious how you all balance that within your own messaging. How do you balance communicating the need, but also, you know, communicating that hope? Not, not, a, not an easy balance I have found. <laughs> Can I tell you something, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you all something that I'm not answering for my organization right here. It's actually to everyone else. So I'm a voracious reader. Um, every time I read someone's story, what you've done to pivot, how you took what you were doing on a daily basis and pivoted, and reprioritized what you're doing to serve and to take care of those that are in crisis and in need. You just immediately get my support. 
Like I, as, as a you know, community member, you immediately get my support. So the story to me is so important on how organizations have pivoted or ramped up what you've done to really, really, really serve your base. That is what gets me every single time. I'm just, we're a little different because we're performing arts. So our need is what we do. Obviously, we do provide services. We do have outreach programs. The fine arts for the community is about joy and hope and all of these wonderful things and respite from what our real world is. We, we, have, a, we have a function and the arts have been one of the most devastated groups in the pandemic because we cannot perform. We cannot bring audiences together. We cannot do what it is that we exist for. But your businesses, you all have pivoted, you've streamlined, you've increased, you've ramped up. These are the stories that I think have got to be told. I love them. They give me hope. Yeah. And that's so true, Judy, and thank you for uh, offering and saying that. And that's the message that we kept uh, sharing to our community through our social media, through our newsletters, and our website, just letting people know that, um, yes, it was a tough season. It is a tough season for us uh, to get through this. And we became the reality reporters for our community just to talk about what's going really going on in our community right. and this is what's happening and the impact and the number of people that are challenging suffering and 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 that are in need and so yes it can be very heavy in sharing those messages but out of that there's a glimmer of hope to say you know what there are people that are thriving and surviving so like sharing those stories uh one story that just really gave me goosebumps was about a single mom that uh, was impacted by COVID-19 and she applied for a job. The job came back and said that um, they're not fulfilling the position. They have to put it on hold. And then her son was, uh, the daycare was closed. She was at home and just hopeless and came to us for help and asking how can I make it through this season with all that's going on with the, with the pandemic. And there was a donor that said, hey, I would like to adopt a family. We're like, perfect. Let's wow. connect them. Here you go. Uh, put the two together, the donor and also this, um, this single mom that's being impacted by the pandemic. And it became a, a story of hope because they connected and then the single mom in return lost her job at home with the kid, but she was a seamstress. So she started to make face masks and she made face masks for the donors and, and their friends and gave us some as well. Um, and now it's become a business for her. Now she's thriving. Those are stories that we love to tell. And that's one of the stories that we put out there to say, hey, yes, it is tough out there for a lot of families, but there's hope. People are coming out. People are thriving. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Mark. And, you know, I think one of the things that nonprofits do so well is you know your community and you're able to make those connections. And Mark, I know you had hosted, you know, one of um, some Zoom calls, you know, just to bring the community together because I think one of the, the things that people are hungry for in times like these are consistent, trusted sources of information. And um, knowing the community and being able to connect those dots for folks and build those relationships, that's priceless. Yeah, and so leading up to uh, May 5th and right at the beginning of the pandemic, we knew we need to get the message out to not just our donors, our stakeholders, but to the community, to the families that we're serving and sharing with them information, giving them knowledge. And so you know how the saying goes, people perish because of the lack of knowledge. And so we were getting information out there to them to help educate them. And so we started um, Harmony Live, which is real conversations with real people about real issues in, in their lives and in their communities. And so we had every week leading up to May 5th, a different topic that's impacting our community, whether it was around mental health, and we had our uh, mental health and counseling team uh, on that call 
we had a call around financial literacy and financial health, helping families to understand how to make it through this season, how to streamline your budget. Then we brought in uh, some experts from a legal standpoint. We partnered with Legal Aid of Northwest Texas and we brought them as guests to just talk about the ling legal implications uh, for the families. Many families are being impacted with evictions. So what are your rights between a landlord tenant relationship and then we also had some conversations with some fellow nonprofit organizations just sharing with them what are you doing to pivot during the pandemic and we also had small businesses to talk about how they're thriving and surviving through the season so that was very intentional uh, it just came out of nowhere we said we need to make it happen and get the word out and it was a multiplier because we streamed we 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 use zoom but we streamed it live on Facebook through our Facebook platform for our organization and it became a multiplier because people were watching and they started to share with others to say, hey, here are some real topics to help you get through this season. So it was very intentional. So the word was getting out and it helped us for May 5th. I love that. Well, and I, you know, we, we all use platforms to get our message out, but we also use people around us. I mean, I think all of us could agree we could use even more capacity in our nonprofits. Um, fundraising is a 365 a day job and we could always use help, right? And so I, one thing that we are always asked is, how can I engage my board? How can I leverage uh, my board members to be messengers and ambassadors of our mission? Um, and I know all of you have done that. Uh, Trudy, you were a board member at Chamberlain Ballet before you came on staff. Um, and Kevin, you gave some interesting uh, examples as well. And so Kevin, I'll have you start, but how, uh, if you could walk us through a little bit of just how you equipped your board members to become ambassadors of your program. Yeah, so I am really grateful that my board is super engaged in the work and is super supportive of Mission Oak Cliff. Um, and firstly, I just try to get them excited um, try to get them excited about the campaign, even though there was a quick turnaround for us to make it happen, you know, but just really um, brainstorming with them how we can make this successful, how can we um, really achieve a goal um, and set a goal too. Um, so with their collaboration, um, they had some really creative ideas and um, we were just so happy to implement them together. And like one of our board members um, had a kid in a preschool at a, a child development center and it encouraged all of the parents at her child development center to select Mission Oak Cliff as the um, nonprofit organization of choice for North Texas Giving Day now, um, which is huge. And then um, just they were excited to participate in to participate in the fundraising um, page and create their own social media um, blast for North Texas Giving Day. And they were also just ambassadors one-on-one -on -one with individuals. So we've had some big money come through because, they, because of conversations that our board members had with, um, with these donors. So um, we're, I'm just super grateful for their engagement during this time. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations on having an engaged board. Um, you know, for, for nonprofits who may be trying to take their board to that next level and they're not quite at that level yet, uh, what would you all, you know, recommend in terms of helping those board members feel equipped uh, to go out and share the broader message? Well, it's making sure that they really and truly understand your organization. It's really easy to say, oh yeah, I'll serve on that board and okay, great, you know, and oh yeah, they do this. But it's really giving your board, again, the messaging, this is what we do, this is why it's important. When you give them those tools, really, really educate them about what it is that you do and why you're different and how you're filling a need, that becomes, their speaking points and you know we're all fortunate that typically our board members are very active in the community 
because they're interested in serving. So they typically have a nice wide web of business associates, of uh, community associates. If you can just remind them that every time they talk about you, they're advancing the cause and give them those talking points, make sure they really understand the foundation of what you're doing. Because again, like with our organization, I think it's really easy to say, oh, well, you, we, I went to their nutcracker. We're so much more than that. And you've got have to make sure they've got those talking points. Mm -hmm. Very key. Um, I'm a little partial. Um, I have the best board ever, the best board in North Texas, hands down, they're the best. Um, so sorry about that, Kevin and Trudy, but. Uh, <laughs> you can duke it out, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, so I have the best board. Uh, and they are, you know, you always hear this, you know, you want a working board and, and I can say that I have a working board and they work for me, but I have, like you said, true, you have to equip them with the message. And so I have a tiered approach in regards to what I communicate to the stakeholders, but I give my board a lot more information probably than what they may need. I give them the numbers, but I tell them the stories, more in-depth stories. Uh, so that they are equipped to go out and, and go tell uh, their networks and share about our organization. But to your point, give them the message, help them understand the mission of your organization and, and that they are engaged with what's happening and ongoing communication with them so that they know what's happening and that they're engaged with what you're doing and they believe in it. Absolutely. Well, and I would tell all of our nonprofits, particularly this year, lean on them, you know, um, because this is a particularly tough year. And, you know, you all put together these incredibly successful campaigns right, right after COVID really hit um, this community. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it's not going away anytime soon. And so as our colleagues are preparing uh, for North Texas Giving Day in September, and they're starting to think about uh, their plans, their communication um, strategy, their messages. You know, do you have any lessons learned um, from the May 5th campaign just around how to communicate in a crisis? Um, was there anything uh, that, that you learned from this most recent campaign that you could pay forward to your colleagues for September? Be bold. I know you all You're have. Right. Be bold. Do not be afraid to exactly tell what's going on and where you need the help. Be bold. Love that. Any other advice? I'll add to that. Uh, just be clear, consistent, and compelling with your message. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And set and, that, you know, and set, I, like, like Trudy said, set that bold goal. And I, each year I would set that goal to say, I, I, I would like to get to this level. And yeah, set that bold goal for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, as I um, have shared with our nonprofit colleagues, you know, North Texas Giving Day is a great space to pilot things, to test things out. You know, it's, it can be a little bit outside of uh, your your normal annual development campaign and, and fundraising plan, communication strategy. Um, it can be that space, that little short window uh, to be a little bit more bold and to test things out and try out some new new things. Um, so I guess uh, that leads me to, to my last question before we share some resources with our colleagues is, um, as you're thinking about the fall, um, are there things now after being successful on May 5th uh, that you're thinking about trying for the first time um, that maybe you wouldn't have tried in the past? I mean, you are all becoming stronger. It may not feel like that, but your, or your organizations, your teams are all becoming stronger through this. So um, just curious if you had any sneak peeks um, or any last pieces of advice as, our, as the whole community looks to September. Yeah, Mission Oak Cliff, we are being more bold, like Trudy said. Um, so we are setting a clear goal of what we want to raise and sending that message out to all of our stakeholders. Um, and we are also going to be sharing a lot more stories. So not only client stories, but also 
stories from staff, stories from volunteers, stories from everyone who has touched Mission Oak Cliff in the past. Um, because it's not just our clients who are being transformed through our work, but it's everyone, um, our whole community. Um, so I'm really excited about sending out that messaging through um, written word, through email, through um, videos as well. Um, and yeah, we're just really excited for that. I love that. Well, I cannot, yes, go ahead, Trudy. Well, I was gonna tell you, so one area that I think that we, in looking back at kind of what we've done over the past several years, I think I would advise anybody, please look at all the tools that North Texas Giving Day has already prepared for you. There is a plethora of things that you can use from messaging that they've already created. They've already set the messaging for North Texas Giving Day. You're just making sure that you're saying, we're participating, we're doing, North Texas Giving Day is coming up and we're part of it, don't forget us. Make sure your messaging gets, um, but create your story. What do you wanna say on your page? And then pull from that messaging in your communications. One of the things that I've been looking at and saying, we really haven't done a lot with the fundraising pages. So that is an area that we are going to ask people within our organization, our board, our company members, we're going to ask them to really, really participate this year with the fundraising pages because I think that brings a heightened awareness on a very personal level. It says, this is an organization I'm involved with and this is an organization I want you to support. I think it can be very, very helpful. So if your organization hasn't taken advantage of that yet, do what I'm doing, get in there and research it really hard. If there's something on there you haven't tried yet, some little tidbit that you see out there or from one of these video sessions with North Texas Giving Day, jump in there and try it. Absolutely, add it to the mix. Yeah, and if I can add to that, Trudy, um, don't give up, you know, don't get frustrated. We've been in this for uh, five plus years and you know, we started very small. We didn't reach our goals and we kept missing our goals every year. Um, and, you know, it could become very frustrating, like, okay, why are we going to do this again? But uh, we kept at it and we kept learning from it. And each year we got better at it. And I'm just fortunate that this time around that uh, we were able to actually reach and exceed our goals. So that was a huge win uh, for us and it gave us a little bit more confidence like we can do this but we kept consistent with trying to use the tools that North Texas Giving Day provided for us uh, the messaging the the timelines all of the templates that they provide is it's very helpful and we look for that information going to the orientation and the trainings that that are offered we're there to attend and try to learn even though we probably heard it a couple of times but what are, what is something new that we can learn uh, something new for us that we want to try that we've never done before is matching dollars. So uh, they always tell us about matching dollars and we just, for whatever reason, never have done it. But this time we're making a goal that we're going to try matching dollars this time around. That's exciting. Well, I'm already excited about all of your campaigns and I cannot thank you all enough for your time. And I think one of the things that Trudy reminded me of earlier this week and that I wanna uh, share with everyone who's tuned in is you're not alone. Uh, we are all working um, hard each and every day, so all, all across the region. And if you wanna tap into your peers and their lessons learned and success stories, join the North Texas Gimme Day nonprofit peer-to-peer -peer Facebook group. That's a, a closed group that any Giving Day participant can join and there have been some really great conversations and hey, I'm thinking about um, doing this on Giving Day, what do people think? Uh, and um, we've gotten a lot of ideas just from reviewing those conversations. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, and um, Trudy and Mark both recommended uh, looking into the resources. If you haven't, definitely go to the resources section um, uh, of the website. Uh, there's two things in particular you should look at. Of course, the big nonprofit toolkit, uh, because there are strategy planning tools, there are graphics, there's nonprofit communication samples in addition to what you heard today, key messaging, but also the marketing toolkit. That gives you some social media 
channel best practices, what to do on email versus Facebook versus Twitter. Um, I, I've learned a lot from it. And, and of course, direct mail campaigns. So, oh, Mark, Trudy, and Kevin, I cannot thank you all enough for joining us today. This has been a wonderful and inspiring conversation. Uh, and um, do work hard, everyone, but also we were talking at the beginning of this conversation before we hit record to take time for self-care. Uh, this is a challenging time and we all need to lean on anyone and everyone around us to get through it. Uh, so I wish everyone the best on North Texas Giving Day 2020. The team is here. You can email us anytime at North Texas Giving Day at cftexas.org. And happy fundraising. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.